Anybody seen something ventured in the audience? One of the most amazing and best documentaries on the start of the valley. Uh, it's not very long, it's about, uh, I think, 45 minutes or an hour or so, but uh, Bill, Bill Draper here is one of the featured folks who helped start a lot of the investment uh, firms in the Valley, two or three, I believe. Um, so I'm, I must say, I, this, I've been wanting to do this particular panel for at least a couple of years. Uh, we tried to get it together last year. Uh, Bill, thanks for hanging around long enough for me to get it done. Sorry, just kidding. Uh, Dark start. <laughs> oh, was that too? Ah, a little bit harsh there, but uh, yes, maybe not. Well, well, we're gonna keep trying. Um, I just wanna, for folks who don't know the history here, uh, we have three generations of Drapers on stage. Uh, the earlier fourth generation uh, was actually one of the first folks in the Valley, uh, General Draper, who uh, I think helped with the Marshall Plan in Europe and was one of the first VCs here in the Valley. Uh, Bill, uh, who uh, has started at least two or three fun funds that I know of, both uh, Sutter, uh, Draper Richards, uh, and others, is that correct? Uh, and Tim, uh, now at Draper, uh, well, I guess doing your own investing, but was the founder of DFJ, that's done some amazing work here in the Valley over the years. And now it's Draper Associates. And a superhero. And, and and the Draper Venture Network. We're, we're just modeling it after 500 I, started. I we're think following you wherever we go. We copied wherever you. Wherever if you're go. copying us, you're copying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did 1.0, we did 2.0, now he's doing 3.0. He's always one-upping me. Uh, but uh, truly, I mean, I, I came to the Valley about 25 years ago, and you were an inspiration in many ways. I got, I got to meet Bill through, uh, I think, some of his work with the uh, World Economic Forum. Um, but uh, you know, getting to meet Steve and you and and Warren, I play frisbee with uh, Warren and and Steve every now and then. But just really some amazing stuff that's happened over the years. Uh, and then see Billy and Adam and Jesse coming up in the next generation, uh, who I think are all running funds. Is that correct? Not running it. Not running it. No, I'm working just with my dad on spending Draper's dad's money. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough job. Trying. <laughs> so I, what I'd hope to do with this is maybe to do a little bit of a three-act play and talk about Bill's work in originally, you know, starting in the Valley in, in the 60s and 70s, uh, and then a little bit from Tim, kind of what happened from the 90s uh, to current day. And then I, I completely agree, except you only gave us 30 minutes. Yeah, so I know. I, you know, it's, it's <laughs> tough. And I'll only take five. 25. <laughs> And I've spent the first five kissing your ass here, so. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's jump in. Um, Bill, can you give us a little bit of sense of what it was like starting a VC firm before it was unclear what a VC firm is or was? Yeah, it was uh, totally different. It was a small operation. Uh, we cooperated with a few other venture firms, uh, Sutter Hill and uh, all, uh, I don't know, Lot, uh, lots of the others. Uh, Sequoia wasn't in, but uh, Kleiner Perkins came in pretty soon after Sutter Hill started. My father, as you pointed out, really started the first venture capital company in the West. There were two in, in New York, and both family, uh, Rockefellers and, and, and uh, Whitney, and one in, Bo in Boston, which was American Research and Development, started by a uh, great professor up at Harvard Business School, Dorio, Professor Dorio. Uh, it was very small. Uh, the the first deals were in you know ten, fifty thousand, twenty thousand dollars. They were called special situations. We shared deals, and uh, and ultimately in a few years they get to be a million dollar investment. We'd share uh, three ways, say, with Mayfield and and Kleiner, for example, at Sutter Hill. Uh, it, was, it was very informal. We'd drive around in a, when Pitch Johnson and I started, I left my father's firm after first three, after three years, and uh, Pitch and I started a, uh, what eventually uh, was the, um, uh, the beginning of Sutter Hill Ventures, and uh, we each got, rented a Pontiac, and we went out into the Pontiac orchards. was the name of a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we went out into the orchards and knock on door, on these uh, barn doors if it said electronics something or other. And we said, we're in venture capital. What is venture capital? There was no knowledge of what venture capital was. Of course, it wasn't called Silicon Valley. 
And uh, all of that started because of Stanford University. I always give credit to Stanford University. Without it, uh, I don't think there would be a um, Silicon Valley today. And uh, it's because they're the, the engine of uh, engineering uh, talent. And we are so lucky to be here, all of us. Uh, now it's getting a lot of traffic, but you know, your wallet is thick and so is the traffic. So don't complain too much. We <laughs> love it. So Words of wisdom from a Bill. Lot of and I apologize. I, uh, this is great because I don't have to heckle the stage. We've got like three generations of hecklers here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In uh, fact, Adam took a selfie and I photobombed Dad while he was <laughs> So just, just thought, you know, the family's very serious. This is a very serious family. Yeah. So uh, Dad, everyone was watching you when you did that. So I love that I you had to I was very confused. <laughs> is, is your dad on Snapchat? That's what I want to know. No, you're not on Snapchat. No, he's on Facebook and Twitter. And Facebook is for old people these days, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm a fan of Facebook. Me, me too. Facebook, Instagram. I so tweet a little. So, Bill, I know when, when you were getting started, a lot of venture was about very capital intensive, longer cycle projects, a lot of hardware companies, disk drive companies, I'm guessing, is that sort of correct? Um, how do you think that's kind of changed? I mean, fast forward maybe 40, 50 years, a lot of things now are not at least as capital intensive. No, I wouldn't say capital intensive is the word, but they were, um, they were you're right, a, a lot of disk drive companies were very successful. But uh, on balance, I don't think the, the capital versus the payoff was uh, was that heavy? I um, I gotta say it was a far more profitable business than it is today. Be I'm an investor. In, I mean, an advisor to NEA, and uh, they are doing brilliantly with a, several billion dollar funds and so on, uh, and their returns are pretty darn good for the average uh, investment company around the world. But but God, we were making 25 percent per year on or or multiples of our capital investment each year it was it was an amazing time because we shared deals we shared information and and there were just a few of us as venture capitalists so the beautiful part of our situation was not much competition today there's a hell of a lot of competition at least in the US and, and uh, so that part has changed dramatically and, and so I think one of the watershed moments, folks may not know as much about this, but in 1975, there was a change in uh, laws for prudent men and the ERISA laws that allowed mutual funds to invest in venture capital. I think that was one of the first. And pe pension funds. And pension funds. Yeah, big time. That made a major difference. So huge amount of money coming into venture in the mid-70s and early 80s. Then you saw a lot of explosion of new funds coming in. Um, what we started in 1959, by the way. Most of you were not born at that point, <laughs> uh, 1959. And uh, so it's been a long time since that we started. And uh, this valley continues to get more and more exciting. And the world, of course, comes here now, where, uh, where nobody ever heard of Palo Alto until, uh, uh, until this marvelous grove. So Tim, I, I don't know if you were in the business in the late 70s and early 80s, but did you see kind of that explosion happen? And how did that sort of shape when you were jumping into the industry? Yeah, it, it, worked, it worked well um, for me. Uh, Dad had plowed a really nice path, and I was able to um, kind of join the group of investors that, were, that he had worked with. Um, so but what, what I, so I got a little bit of job? first day on the job. Um, Actually, I, I kind of decided I'd do three investments really quickly right off the bat just because I wanted to make sure that I, um, nobody was focused on any one of them. <laughs> um, and, uh, Diversification. And so, yeah. So those actually, uh, two, two of them worked out okay, and one of them uh, was a disaster. So um, you're hitting two. Could I give my side <laughs> of that story? <laughs> no. No, you've had your time. He's had his time. Wait, wait, wait. I, I want to hear, he I hear this that. weird I was, history. I thing. was on my way to Washington. He doesn't remember. How's your <laughs> How's your memory, Dad? <laughs> I, I, I feel like he's about I to I was on the way to Washington, thing. and I thought, God, 
I don't know how, I didn't give him any idea of how to do this business of venture capital. I just turned over a small group of family investments that we had. I came back about six months later uh, and uh, we talked to the, our, uh, you know, accountant and uh, he went through uh, and he said it would be a good idea to go through what you've been, what Tim's been doing with you. And so, in, Tim in normal families, people you know steal some money out of the wallet and go down and buy some ice cream. In the Draper family, you come back, there's a million dollars missing. He's made three investments. <laughs> Tim, so so there there were actually six investments that he had made, and uh, and they the first one, how's that one? Well, that's gone. How about the second one? Not doing so well. <laughs> the third one, uh, you should, let me tell you the story. It was <laughs> the fourth one, and he finally the sixth one. I said, well, what about the sixth one? I thought, this guy doesn't have a clue. <laughs> well, He's your son. That's You're a win talking about your son. <laughs> that, that turns out to be a winner. Well, it's like today. That one investment out of six paid a so multiple so on the whole to just just to get the numbers series. straight uh, <laughs> that that was parametric technology 172 times on the money just thought okay. I'd let you know uh, <laughs> so I guess I guess if you get 172 X one times out of six you're doing okay right well yeah. and, and one was parenting magazine that was three times on the money but there were and by the uh, way there Tim were a lot of losers never tell you about his accomplishments there were <laughs> a lot of losers <laughs> all okay. very modest so let, I, think modest. It's, I think it's time to move on to the new generation <laughs> um, anyway we're we're uh, we're thrilled yeah my uh, my career started with knocking on doors with anything that said software on it which was interesting and then it moved to where it got to be, uh, and maybe it was because of the pension funds or whatever, uh, people started to really become entrepreneurs. Right. And they, they saw this really interesting opportunity for a career. And so, uh, so then it became uh, that I wanted to go out there and, and market and let entrepreneurs know that I existed and so that they'd come to me. And then, uh, then it was w a thing of filtering them down to figure out which ones they wanted. So Tim is my role model for shameless marketing, marketing in the Valley. Like selling to marketing. And, uh, and then I realized that there were opportunities outside of the Silicon Valley. I started to set up the, the what's now yeah. the Draper Venture Network. And we had a bunch of offices around the US. Uh, and then we sort of thought, you know, it was it was the craziest idea. We started to think about doing things outside of the U.S. So, so and both of you have been involved in creating VC outside the U.S. What what motivated you to do that, and you know why, <coughs> why and when? Well, when Dad took me on several trips. Uh, we we went on regular trips to different parts of the world, and and it was so it was not so foreign to me to think about going outside the U.S. And uh, you folks and started so the first venture capital fund in India, right? Uh, he did. I did. Draper Richards. He With did. Uh, Robin <laughs> Richards. And the way that happened was I got to know the world because I had run the Export Import Bank of the U.S. for Ronald Reagan and, and also just went to just the happened U to run the an Export Import Bank in and the went U.S. and went uh, up to the U.N. and and ran the largest grant aid program in the world for the U.N. Uh, and as a result, I really got to know the world. I saw Asia was growing. So I came back, met this wonderful gal, Robin Richards, after retiring from the UN, and I wanted to go to Asia, and she did too, and we started this uh, fund uh, called Draper International, and, and it worked in India. We picked India because it was spoke English, <laughs> basically. Uh, China wouldn't have been so good, I think. And, and Tim, I know you have tons of success with DFJ here and Hotmail and a bunch of other early wins, but what has kind of changed for you over the last 10, 20 years and sort of seeing, you've, you've kind of moved back to seed stage investing and earlier stage investing. Yeah, the, the international uh, thing has changed for me. I mean, w we, we moved uh, and, and worked with this group and started something called DFJ ePlanet. With DFJ ePlanet, we were able to Baidu and Skype. Back There's Baidu some and pretty Skype decent win. In a time when no one was winning in the venture capital business. So we had just tried this new thing by going international and we got the first search engine for China and Skype uh, came out of a great uh, uh, 
you know, hunting down an old technology and, um, I mean, if, uh, the old technology, peer-to-peer -peer technology u being used for yeah. music and they were, they were sued out of existence and then Kazaa. they decided to do something else. Just so for the record, I invested in Skype before he did. Th this is the <laughs> long. That is not true. This is the <laughs> longest <laughs> argument that's been like going on for like 20 don't years. Don't get them started. <laughs> you know, I, I don't care like who was first. If you guys are picking Skype and Baidu uh, early stage investments, I think you're doing okay. Uh, you know, Esto <laughs> Esto okay, I think the whole nation of Estonia views themselves as entrepreneurs because of Skype. I mean, certainly Baidu is, you know, one of the yeah, big... Yeah, I am now a virtual resident of Estonia. You are? I have my card. Wait, my was this Jervitsun who got you to do this? Or no, this I, they came to me. I actually l uh, brought Steve in to join. <laughs> but but uh, but they made me the third virtual resident, and this is You're my You're number card. three? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay, that's that's some solid bragging rights. Yeah, and and we were just there, and this is... I'm a big believer that governments have to compete for us now. Yep. I think it. I think the world has changed. We're mobile, so we don't need to just stay in one place. And they have to start thinking, hey, I got to get more efficient, more effective. And the Estonian government has been the most effective at doing that. Uh, they, they're now looking at the world in an e-governance yep. way. Absolutely. And we're able to uh, choose. So they, they're using... Um, just by do using digital signatures, they save 2% of their GDP. Yeah, Apparently, there are a lot of signatures that go on in this study. Is <laughs> a lot of paper. <laughs> um, I, I know we're trying to cram a whole bunch of information in here, and I, I apologize for not giving you folks enough time to talk about you know decades of investment. But the new next generation is here, and love to hear from all of the third, four, fourth generation of Drapers, I guess. What's interesting for you folks? I mean, maybe a little perspective about how it is growing up uh, trying to you know, walk in very, very big shoes. But you guys are also carving out new areas for investment too. Uh, uh, yeah, we're mostly looking at uh, MOOCs, flash deals, um, <laughs> daily deals, e-commerce. Awesome. E e we, no we went big on the pineapple subscription I box. I hear those are hot. <laughs> um, and, uh, How's the follow on coming on that pineapple <laughs> subscription great. box commerce? Oh, uh, on paper, we're up. You said you were up 197x? 198x, if you can <laughs> believe it. <laughs> That's in Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Uh, so jokes aside, maybe I know you guys have made uh, at least a little bit of noise about Bitcoin and financial services. What's your take on cryptocurrency these days, blockchain, et cetera? So I, I'm going to give a quick summary of like the family so everyone gets like w what our expertise are. Sure. Okay. Created venture capital, first fund in India, Created global venture capital, female founder, extraordinaire fund, better than my dad at investing in things, Bitcoin and virtual reality. Okay, yes. that's it. <laughs> Got it. Uh, Bitcoin and virtual reality. Yeah, those are th those are things. Is uh, Bitcoin is virtual reality or? Uh, no? There's a Venn diagram of companies that are in Bitcoin and virtual reality, and I think there might be one there somewhere. Kay. Uh, and it, it's m Boost VC, which is my fund. So, <laughs> but seriously, you guys made a bunch of investments in Bitcoin. So uh, we're the most active investors in Bitcoin and blockchain. Uh, well, we've invested in 56 uh, Bitcoin companies. I was the first angel investor in Coinbase. Who here has Bitcoin? Who here owns some Bitcoin? Everyone else get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, uh, yeah. can, can we ask them again? How many people are up on their investment in Bitcoin? Everyone else. I'm <laughs> okay, and I can't do the math subtraction yeah. there, but that looked so like 50-50, I'm not sure. Yeah, so Bo Boost VC was the first like uh, in institutional, if you could have called me that three and a half years ago, investor in it saying that Bitcoin was going to be a thing, and then people kept saying, no, it's not going to be a thing, and we're still saying it's not going to be a thing four years later, so I think it, it's probably going to be a thing. <laughs> Um, the, uh, <laughs> and the so if you had to go back again, would you make those same investments? Would you make as many investments? In Knowing what I know now, would I go back? So I would bet on the same people I made bets on completely. And yeah, it's, it's the future of finance. It's the coolest thing ever. I, I'd like All of us are going to be using Bitcoin or blockchain in the next five years. You just won't know you're using it. It's like the way that you don't say I'm going to TCP IP you a message. 
Th like the, the, it's it's going to be the back end job in the entire ecosystem. So yeah, so all the funding this year is the institutional adoption of the blockchain, which all the funding we were referencing was CB Insight. All the institutions are experimenting, spending millions of dollars, working with startups, trying to do things in the space. Um, and they really are, some of them are like sort of thinking, oh, there's blockchain, let's sprinkle it on all our problems and make those go away. Um, but, but really it is a fundamental technology that's gonna change the way everyone ex like experiences it. It's a global, the coolest thing about it is it's a global technology. Like we think about the United States when we're thinking about ourselves, but the way that 500 has presence everywhere, this is a technology that's really encompassing the financial markets everywhere and bringing everyone up to the sort of the speed that our payment system is at. So Bitcoin's probably a great investment for uh, Venezuela or Argentina or India. maybe some of the yeah. African American countries. Uh, you made a comment that uh, Billy was better at investing than his dad. Yeah. Oh yeah. Can oh, oh yeah. So that's that's <laughs> just <laughs> okay. Let's and see. I'm let's out. Back that's that's, not, back that up. that's <laughs> not a very high bar. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, yeah, oh. We, wow. I mean, we already heard about Never the track record. Us. This one's a miss. This one's a miss. Billy, Billy, Billy just I hits. I'll take this because I know it's about Billy. Billy's like, I want to talk right now, but um, he. We're is just gonna keep talking really over each other. He's a really amazing investor. Where my dad, you know, as they say, he he does a little bit of everything. Billy is like so data driven and so focused on just every single um, point of an investment. They're they're actually very complimentary. You owe him some money or something? What's yeah. going <laughs> guys, <laughs> guys, seriously, you don't have to pay me back. Th it's th fine. Th this is the <laughs> one time in the year we will compliment him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually want to make a quick point uh, that I should have made 90 seconds ago. Um, so the last speaker said something about burying the dead slowly. And one thing that uh, Adam quiet, quietly. He qu said quietly. So, uh, quietly, quietly. Well, this got um, more quickly. This is actually, not slowly. Quickly. Th this quietly. is um, this is something that should uh, not go unsaid. I think everyone up here is the kind of uh, venture capitalist that you want. He said he would not change any of his his investments in the last three years. Any investor would say, "Yeah, I would take back this." I and was this. checking the facial ticks when he said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, but you want that kind of investor who's going to say, who's going to sort of ride or die with you, um, and it's easy to, s it's easy to, you know, erase the tweets. It's easy to take back what you said, or to, you know, make a few changes on your post. I heard that he would probably invest in the people, but maybe make some changes in the business model. No, you misheard. You misheard. <laughs> he meant he would <laughs> ride or die. I saw him stand up here and say, "I will ride or die with any of my companies." Right. Billy, and why are you better at investing than your dad? I am not. Um, <laughs> He's humble. Yeah, he's <laughs> humble. I think we what think what very do you differently. Like to invest in? What do you like to invest in? They think vastly differently. Like that's that's the reason that the balance of Draper Associates works yeah, so well. Yeah, they're they're very like complimentary. I think it was it was one of these cases where I I had the advantage of coming in sort of a blank canvas, thinking, oh, shouldn't we invest in companies that make money? <laughs> and it and 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 it came at a time it came at a time where. The later stage, the guy, you know, we do seed early stage investing, and it came at a time where the later stage investors were also looking for such things. So these guys Crazy. who, it's very early to tell, <laughs> but these guys who invested after us paid, you know, higher price than we did, and that's all we have to go on right now. <laughs> could, could you point out maybe one, two, or three areas where you have a difference of opinion with your dad, or what, what kind of areas do you think are interesting to go after now? I think we have similar opinions in terms of uh, areas of interest. I think he is uh, much more going after, he has a great understanding of the sort of vision of what this could be, and I'm a little bit more boots on the ground of what this is now and what, uh, you know, if it can sustain the next six or nine months. Um, so I th no, I think we're interested, we're both very interested in FinTech and consumer tech. Um, we're seeing a lot of logistics, really interesting logistics companies. Um, you know, marketplaces. We are looking at ed tech. I wasn't really kidding about the MOOCs, although that made me think we should be getting better deals. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think we're all looking in the same places. It's just about how we approach. W what we've seen so far is when we both like something, it works out really well. When it's a, f you know, when it's a fight, we'll it's it could work out well, but we too early. <laughs> Uh, Jesse, you seem like the voice of reason, or oh at least no. perspective I'm on this at panel. All I'm not at all the vo voice of reason, but thank you. That was very nice. So thank you for having us, first of Absolutely. all. We yeah, really we appreciate I, you, you know, facilitating. He's got the eyebrows. Yeah. I'd yeah, like him to be moment. a part of the this family.
Okay. Wow. So <laughs> I, I've always been given. Uh, so okay. Okay. This this is just a moment. Go ahead, I've, Jess, got yeah. the, I've got the adopted <laughs> eyebrows of the Draper family. <laughs> They, they actually, I think that's a logo for you guys. It's just the eyebrows by themselves. So um, I do have to just say, you know, growing up with these amazing role models, um, I, I'm oddly comfortable in rooms with, as I say, men in suits. And so growing up in that world, like uh, this is like this is just like a normal day for me. It feels very, I feel very comfortable here because I grew up going to conferences with my dad and um and they are absolutely incredible, but what I didn't see around me growing up was uh, female founders, and there weren't enough female founders. So as you can hear, everyone's sort of areas of expertise, I really want to help. I want more female CEOs in my lifetime. So I'm trying to do anything and all things women-related, and I try to help with that in two ways. One is with my show, which was Emmy-nominated last year, um, the called Valley The Valley Girl, Girl Show. And um, one, and that's that we interview 50% women in business. And then the other is with my new fund called Halogen Ventures, where we invest in female-founded, mainly consumer technology companies. But um, it's hard to get a voice in, in this crew of boys, but I'm the girl voice, so come talk to me if you're a girl. <laughs> awesome. She, ju she just took 50% market share in the Draper family. Slim pickings for the rest of us. So, Jesse, I can uh, tell you my personal uh, experience in trying to do uh, television uh, was not as good as our, our launch of Silicon Valley show. Uh, I had a nationally television uh, TV show for one episode before we got completely shit canned and canceled. Um, I think we should go. We should go do a show together. I, you know, I'd, I'd love to try that again sometime. <laughs> um, I want to ask you a question because uh, I think you recently had another generation of Draper. Uh, what's it like being a mom and a founder and an investor all at the same time? It is so hard. Dude, no one told me this. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't think they have much experience on that. This though. is like, <laughs> it is hard. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to balance it. I finally have it under control, and I can afford child care, but not everybody can. And so I can work, and I am working. Um, but it, it's uh, definitely a balance, and I feel guilty when I'm away, and I try to kind of, like, turn it off. I've nanny cammed out my whole house, so that makes me feel a little better, like, so I can see him when he's sleeping. Sounds creepy, but it's like, I'm sure you guys, you guys do it. Who has a nanny cam? Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a balance, but it's also a new world. I think um, I'm actually talking to quite a few companies now that are trying to solve problems for women and men uh, in the child care capacity because I think we need to change something, especially while women are having children who want or need to continue working. Um, so I've seen quite a few part-time, you know, executive placement companies and, uh, like, specifically for women. Um, but, you know, men stay home too. So it's, it's a new world, and I can't wait to see how it evolves. But it's hard. Can you guys maybe, I, I think you have the luxury of seeing multiple generations of funds, investment thesis, probably around the breakfast table conversations about investing. But I think a lot of people here are starting funds or trying to start funds or trying to figure out how to be an investor. What do you feel has been a unique perspective that you've been given as being part of this, you know, I would say dynasty, you know? What do you, what do you kind of take for granted that you think would be helpful to other fund managers, people getting started? Um, I can jump, uh, sorry, I just spoke, but um, I, I think our, all of us believe in the power of the network and networking, and that's something definitely my dad, you know, taught me. He always says, I don't know Bill Gates that well, but if anyone wants to meet him and they're not crazy, I'll introduce them to him. And then he says, you know, he, he remembers me as the guy who keeps bringing in great people. And um, so we always are happy to make introductions Again, as long as you're not crazy, um, <laughs> and uh, the you filter's know, low. <laughs> you know, it, it all it all <laughs> it all comes back to you, and I think that's something that definitely goes down the line. That started with you. Mm. And yeah, you know, my 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 dad once said, uh, disposable razors work really good the first two times, and then really good the fourteenth time. That's, That's really it. deep. That was forgot. really deep. Do you <laughs> want it <laughs> to expound? I'm not, I'm not sure I got it, but I'm going to act like I, yeah. I <laughs> got it. 
I, I think about it every day when I'm shaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tim, I don't know if you can kind of uh, take us home here, but uh, <laughs> you, s you seem to be I'm getting the brunt I'm of all the I'm still baffled by the, the disposable razor comment. <laughs> 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 I was thinking he was thinking of that shave, that the daily oh, shave, yeah. dollar dollar shave shave thing. <laughs> but no, he was thinking about. It shaving. was like when I was ten. Still yeah. think about it today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Adam. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, take it home. Uh, this is a really fun family. We love it. Uh, so I'm glad to have you join us. Thank you. I yeah. really. Uh, I I think you should be a Draper because look at what he's doing. I mean, this is so awesome, well, and uh, we. Um, I, I and hate to well thank the you for bringing uh, the thank you for bringing the family together. Absolutely. We don't see each other too much except Billy and I work together this every day. And, and I, Adam, I work in the Adam basement. works right downstairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesse, I do miss you a little. She's down in uh, L.A., so we I have to I have to fly down once in a while to see. I needed Jessie. some distance. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Dad, well, we see each ever other uh, about every Sunday. So, uh, so I'm glad you got us together because otherwise we'd never see each other. And, and really, I think you know, I, I'm not <laughs> kidding when I say you folks have been an inspiration for me and a lot of what we're doing at 500. And and that's not just on the investing side. I think having the global perspective, having uh, a kind of you know perspective about women and diversity and other folks. I know you guys have done a lot of work in that before it became a popular topic. Uh, and I really think that kind of stems from a belief in opportunity for people all over the world. And, and I really think that you guys have done a tremendous amount of work uh, being role models for that work and continuing into the current generation. So thank you very much. Terrific. Thanks, Thanks Dave. For having Thank you. Thank you, Dave.